All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming back on a Sunday morning. So I've just got a couple of minutes here, and that is to introduce the three topics. Actually, Kayla has, to some degree, just told you what they are already, and just give you a little bit of an idea as to why these three topics in particular have been selected for your consideration across the next few weeks. So in principle, I'm going to be telling you why and what the issues are. So the first thing to say is that, as you found out in the previous session, the, the overall carbon plan process has been going on for over a year and a half. And so all of the different issues relevant to uh, climate mitigation and reducing emissions have been under consideration for quite a while. In fact, the Citizens Assembly was timetabled to take place last year. And because of COVID and various other concerns, it's been pushed back in the process. And what that means is that other issues have been taken into consideration already. And that has inevitably led to further thinking about well, what should be the primary focus of the citizens in the assembly. And the key thing here is a mixture of pragmatism and uh, an interest in what are the really key challenging difficult issues that are facing Devon over the coming decades. And in terms of practical challenges, it's recognition of the fact that there simply isn't enough time across several sessions of a citizens assembly to deal with all of the different aspects of climate change. We would be here for weeks and months, maybe years, if we sought to bring all of these issues under your consideration and to give you sufficient time to learn about the details and the challenges involved in each. So the evidence gathering phase of the interim Devon Carbon Plan so far isolated six particular issues that could be um, provided to the citizens in the assembly for consideration. <clears throat> and what's happened over the last few months is a narrowing down of these six issues to three. Now, of these six, one was about landscape character. How should the landscapes of Devon evolve in ways that meet the uh, net zero um, challenge and targets and also have due concern for the other things we heard about yesterday in terms of uh, just transition, etc. Um, and then the, another issue was about uh, diet and food and farming, and in particular, national calls by the Committee on Climate Change to reduce the intake of beef and lamb and dairy products by 10% or by 20% nationally over the coming decades. So there were these two issues of landscape, um, farming and diet, what we eat, um, at landscape considerations. And we've decided that there are other means of tackling these. Um, for example, there is a Devon, Devon landscape character assessment that will go ahead over the coming years. There's a Devon landscape policy officer group that will take those issues forward. In terms of uh, livestock and diet, uh, there are moves to establish a Devon food partnership and a net zero farming forum. So these issues are not being ignored. They're not being neglected, but it was felt that Given the time constraints, um, the remaining four issues could be packaged into three, and they are the ones that we would like you to consider over the next few sessions as a group. So what are they? Well, number one, it's about energy. What is the role of onshore wind energy in the Devon uh, renewable and Devon carbon strategy? Um, under what conditions might the people of Devon support onshore wind? So we know that there needs to be a shift, sorry, uh, we know that there needs to be a shift towards um, uh, different kinds of energy sources. What is the particular role of onshore wind energy in that? Number two is about transport. What should be done to encourage less car use, and in particular, less use of cars which are pow powered by fossil fuels, diesel and petrol? How can reducing road capacity and financial carrots and sticks reduce traffic levels and emissions while maintaining levels of mobility that are required in order for economic and social and environmental concerns. And then the third issue is about buildings. What would be the best ways of encouraging or requiring people to retrofit their homes, their properties, their business premises in order to reduce carbon emissions to the extent that were needed? So these three particular energy issues are the ones that we focused on to do with onshore wind, to do with levels of car use being reduced, and to do with retrofitting or changing the fabric of buildings in order to reduce carbon emissions. So these are the ones we would like you to take forward, and now you'll be hearing in far more detail about those from experts in those different domains. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Patrick.